Here's the panic bar. So what happens is you push anywhere across this bar. Spoiler alert, this is gonna be awesome. This right here is going to be a gate closure. So that way when that gate is thrown open, it's gonna bring that gate back to a closed position. We're going to need a plate. So this one slides into this plate, which makes it now adjustable to accommodate your gate length. We have two cutout patterns. So we gotta figure out what bar we have for what cutout pattern we need. So there's gonna be a top and a bottom. And what's gonna determine that is our key cylinder. Here's our key cylinder, here's a key box. And let's keep in mind of the direction that this gate is going to latch. When you're on the secure side, the gate is gonna latch on the left. This would be our latch point. This is the key cylinder box, and this has to be able to pass through the gate so that, that way you can get your key in there, half an inch each side, give it just a little bit of room. So that we're gonna cut our tension bar out and we're gonna cut a little bit of the first straw out as well. We're gonna bend those tabs back. You're gonna knuckle them back just like you would on the bottom of the chain link. It is a little tight. Again, knuckling all that back. And we just had to do that because we had to be able to get this box in there. All right, so you have a big tab and a little tab on the key cylinder box. On the mounting plate, you have a big tab and a little hole. So you're gonna slide big tab into big tab, cut out, little tab into little hole. We have our box, we have our key cylinder, and we have our beauty ring. It just makes everything all nice and pristine and cool and sleek and clean looking. Now we have a little bit of a problem. Our screws right here need to pass through these holes. Those holes are just a little bit too small, so we need to drill them out just a little bit. Okay, so now we got that turned just right. Now, as you can see, I got a whole bunch of screws sticking up here. We need to cut that first tip of the screw off. And then boom, that now has, that has now found its hole. Now we need to go ahead and get into this bag and we need this piece out. This Dumahickey right here, this actuator pin, that needs not to pass through or penetrate that red sticker. They give you a whole bunch of tick mark lines right down the actuator pin of where you need to trim that. And I have highlighted with my black marker where I need to trim mine. So it is not touching the plate and it is trying to press up through that red sticker. That is not good. With our cutoff wheel, we're gonna take just a sliver of that off. This is, this is actually a very, very, very critical step. Okay, good. I cannot feel that coming through that sticker. So if you leave it just a hair too long, what's gonna happen, that pin will get stuck in there to the point where this thing won't function right. And if you do that, you gotta take all this back apart and start over and grind that little bit off. Ask me how I know. You are gonna have extra hardware. Uh, I remember doing my first one, like, oh my gosh, I got enough hardware to start a hardware store. Did I do this right? Yes, don't worry. If you followed this video, you did it right. One more step. This is a very critical step. So when that key cylinder is all out by itself and you have the key in the cylinder, you're able to turn that rod. I would just refrain from doing that. This little tattletail thing right here is keeping me from being able to turn that key 180 degrees. If you turn that key 180 degrees and you have it in the upside down position, you're not going to be able to take that key out. And if you can't take that key out, guess what? You get to take everything back apart again, just to flip that back around on the key cylinder, just so you can take the key out. Again, ask me how I know. So now it's time to attach the panic bar to this. We're gonna marry the two together right there as it comes through. 
let's just go ahead and double check and test everything. I am able to control this with the key and I can get that to suck in all the way and it comes out just fine. And I can pull the key out. Yay! So now, now, we have these two little short screws, probably about a half inch long. Those are going to come through on the back side of the bracket that we put on the first time. We're gonna pass through that bracket and there is threads inside the panic bar. We're gonna screw that screw in. Let's see here, now it is time to go ahead and set the whole panic bar assembly into that, that cutout that we cut out first. I want it resting against the top of the middle rail from the top of the gate. And then I want my plate to be about flush with the edge of the gate. Um, I can already see I gotta knock a tension band just up out of the way. Put one screw in this. That was a self-tapping screw right there, bud. Just double checking to make sure that I look like my plate is square with the gate, which it does appear to be. Continue putting in screws. If you feel like you need more, you put in as many as you want. So now this metal piece ties into the back piece and it ties in like so. So it goes in like that. Now that's gonna slide on. And that is what keeps our bar from moving. We're gonna take our drill bit. We're gonna draw out these two screws. That's what's gonna hold the butt of that bar in place. It's time for the small tedious stuff, all the trim. So we did the butt trim. These teeny, teeny, tiny screws, and that's what's gonna secure this trim cover. And if you have somebody that likes to drop very, very small screws, don't have them do this step. Two on the back, two on the front. Let's talk about this thing real quick. We would have used this on the key cylinder had we had a bigger hole. It's a key cylinder washer, but our hole's in a different spot and our screws still work, so we did not need to use this. But if you had a big hole in your mounting plate, what you would need is you'd use this washer at that point in time. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna throw all this hardware into one bag, so that way when we go to install a skate in the field, uh, we're gonna have all that there. All right, so now we got our gate in the field and our gate is hung. If you're wondering how we got the gate hung or anything about the process of that, make sure and see that video, which is right up here. So this is what that panic bar is going to latch into, but we still need one more piece to be able to do all that together. That is what the panic bar is going to latch into. I'm sure it has an awesome, cool name. Yeah, I don't know it. We are going to grab two, we we'll call them quarter inch stainless steel screws. So there's various hole patterns on this thing. We're going to use the top and bottom. Those are pre-threaded. Try to keep everything nice and straight. What we can do is we could use a U-bolt on this because we are bolting to a two and seven eighths post. However, we want to eliminate the chance of anybody tinkering with this. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go ahead and weld it on. I'm gonna use a generator welder made by Lincoln Electric. The rod that we like to use is 6010. Uh, it burns hot enough to penetrate right through that galvanized coating and just makes everything all nice and muy, 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 so much better. So what we want to do is have this close enough to the point where it's actually going to miss when it opens, but right to the point where it's going to latch. Okay, so we got one tack on it. Make sure it latches, which it does. So let's go ahead and put one more tack on it, see what happens. And as soon as we're convinced that everything is good and set, we're gonna go ahead and fully weld it. Okay, now that we're done welding, we're gonna go ahead and 
wire brush all of our welds. We're gonna go ahead and paint them. What are we gonna paint them with? We gotta cover that weld or else it's gonna rust. Gals Pro, exclusively at SWI. See the link below. So there's never a padlock to ever remove. The gate is always locked. It's a free exit from the secure side to the non-secure side. If you're wanting to enter from the non-secure side to the secure side, you can only do so by a key. The other thing that you can do is you can do access control with these. So you can do an electric strike to the point where you can actually badge in with a card reader. So there's a lot of different functions with these. We give them a little SWI keychain. This right here is the anti-tamper and this is the actual latch. This will latch into our latching device. If they're both out like this, I can play with it and I can stick something through there and get myself into that gate. Now, if this is depressed like it's supposed to be, I can't get that to suck in. So in order for that to happen, there's a little bolt, about a three quarter inch long. Now I need to find said nut for said bolt. So that bolt is gonna go right there. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna act as a spacer. It's gonna keep that gate far enough away and keep that anti-tamper sucked in so that that way that latch cannot de be depressed and then broken into that direction. All the way in the closed position, we cannot push that in because our bolt, our spacer bolt is right there. If you were concerned about that anti-tamper, you could weld said bolt on so now it cannot be removed. There is an importance on the way that you install your latch and make sure that you put it so that the flat side of the actual latch goes against the gate, the gate frame, so you can put that bolt in. There's a gap filler you can put in right here if you're worried about people really tampering with your stuff and it is gonna come across and then cover this, cover this space right here. Do see the link below if you're in need of one of those as well. You can also put some steel across here. You can either weld it or you could screw it. It creates a barrier if somebody wants to try to reach something over the fence to try to depress that panic bar. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget, we are Wyoming's Fence and Gate Company and we hope you have a good dang day.